Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. For this video, I had to conduct more than 500 tests. I have tested three graphics cards, I have tested two CPUs and two screen resolutions. Some of the tests produced rather unexpected results, or at least these results were unexpected to me, so I had to redo my tests to make sure that these are accurate results and I don't have something wrong with my test setup. So the goal of this video is to figure out which of the GPU brands are working the best with the Intel LG2011 version 3 platform or so-called X99. And for this test I have picked three GPUs, one of each vendor, which would have a roughly equal level of performance. Let's start with the AMD graphics card. So for the AMD I picked this AMD Radeon RX 5700 XT. Maybe I should have went with RX 6600 or 6650 XT, but I don't have those GPUs at the moment, and this one performs very close to those and maybe even better in some games. For NVIDIA, I have this NVIDIA RTX 3060, nothing special, it's just a standard RTX 3060 12GB, and this one in particular is from Zotac. And the last one, and probably the most interesting one, is this Intel Arc A750 from ASRock. According to me, the graphics card looks really nice, and this ASRock cooler also works very well. The graphics card stays cool and silent. So, I'm going to test these three graphics cards, which have a roughly equal level of performance with two different systems. The first system is going to be Xeon E5 2696 V3, which is X99, and the second system will be i7 12700K. And I have to say that I have enabled resizable bar or rebar or SAM smart access memory for all three GPUs on both platforms. But if you have a system that does not support a resizable bar, then I do not recommend your Intel GPU because the performance will be significantly worse than what I will show in my graphs. With this amount of test results, I really struggled to put everything on one screen to show the whole picture. I was forced to split it into multiple slides with multiple graphs to have somehow meaningful visualization of the data. If you're interested, of course, you can go to the end of the video and see all of my slides, pause there and investigate the numbers if you are interested. The detailed test specification of my hardware you can see on your screen, but in short, I have tested two configurations. The first one is a Xeon E5 2696V3. Of course, I have implemented Turbo Boost Unlock and I have also disabled hyper threading. My second system is Core i7 12700K, and here I have disabled all TDP limitations. I have also disabled E cores or efficient cores. These efficient cores do nothing good for gaming and in certain cases they may decrease their performance. Additionally, I need to mention that Hitman 3 benchmark is very inconsistent with minimal FPS value and that's why I had to disable it from some calculations. One more remark is that Shadow of the Tomb Raider using Intel Arc A750 crashes if I try to use DirectX 12. Thus, I was forced or limited to DirectX 11 when testing Intel GPU. Let's start with AMD RX 5700 XT at 1080p. Here we don't see anything unusual or spectacular. The graphics card performs equally well with the Xeon E5 and Core i7 CPUs. Apart of Far Cry, which is using only one or two CPU cores, all other games are providing basically very comparable performance. In Far Cry, Core i7 would be about 30-50% faster if we compare average and minimal FPS. On average, across these 10 tested games, Core i7 is only about 14-7% faster if we compare minimal and average FPS. Switch into 1440p resolution and here we are almost fully GPU limited. Still, Core i7 delivers slightly better minimal FPS performance in games like Far Cry, Assassin's Creed and Horizon Zero Dawn. Overall, the performance between the two CPUs at 1440p with RX 5700 XT is basically identical or at least very close to each other. The next tested GPU is NVIDIA RTX 3060, also starting with the 1080p. The results are very close and very similar to what we have seen with the AMD RX 5700 XT. Far Cry 6 is still using only a few CPU cores and with RTX 3060 we still have the same 50-30% gap between i7 and e5. 
Overall, across these 10 tested games with RTX 3060, Core i7 is about 12 and 6% faster than Xeon E5. Using RTX 3060, the gap between these two CPUs is slightly smaller compared to RX 5700 XT, but it's worth mentioning that overall RX 5700 XT is slightly faster than RTX 3060. Switching to 1440p resolution, and really there is not much extra to say. We are fully GPU limited, and both of the CPUs are delivering a basically identical performance. Core i7 still delivers slightly better minimal FPS in several games, but oddly enough, in a few games, Xeon E5 is consistently rendering a few frames more than Core i7. Now starts the fun part. Intel Arc A750 also starting with the 1080p, a part of the well-known and usual Far Cry 6 that uses only a few CPU cores, we have some more issues. Starting with the shadow of the Tomb Raider, which would just crash in DirectX 12 mode, and where I'm forced to use DirectX 11, we see a huge gap between Core i7 and Xeon E5. DirectX 11 is not optimized for multi-core CPUs and it heavily relies on a single core performance. That's why much faster core i7 heavily beats Xeon E5. Horizon Zero Dawn seems to be completely broken with the Xeon CPU as well. I don't know what's going on there, but the CPU load can go as high as 90%, while the GPU load stays under 60%. It almost seems like the game is trying to render itself using the CPU instead of the GPU. Most likely it's some sort of a driver bug and we can hope that Intel will fix it sooner rather than later. It's also worth mentioning that in Watch Dogs Core i7 delivers 10-20% better performance compared to Xeon E5. So overall, across these 10 tested games, Core i7 12700K is about 21 and 15% faster than Xeon E5 2696V3 when using Intel Arc A750 GPU. This is a rather sad and for me pretty unexpected result. I thought that Intel Arc A750 would perform more equal between these two GPUs. Switching to 1440p doesn't really solve these problems, even though at this resolution we are primary GPU limited. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is still crashing using DirectX 12 mode, and Horizon Zero Dawn performance is still horrible. All in all, at 1440p, Core i7 12700K is still 17 and 9% faster than Xeon E5 across these 10 tested games. To finish this video, let me say a few words about each of these graphics cards. Let's start with AMD Radeon RX 5700 XT, and I was really positively surprised with this GPU. When 5700 XT showed up on the market, I bought one for myself, and I was not very pleased with it. I had different driver issues, in particular the black screen issue when I connect multiple monitors or try to switch screen resolution. During this test, when I tested two different configurations, and I have tested uh, many different games with the two different resolutions, I did not get a single crash or a single issue. This is a perfect example of AMD's fine wine, means the GPU is getting better with the better drivers and with age. Radeon RX 5700 XT is also performing equally well with the old Xeon E5 CPU and the new Core i7 CPU. Thus, you can use it with old systems and with the new systems. Right now, this graphics card costs about 200 euros or 200 dollars, and I believe it's a very attractive option. And this price makes 5700 XT to be one of the best value graphics card on the second-hand market. Of course, if you're looking to buy a second-hand 5700 XT, I would suggest you to buy an aftermarket design, so not the reference design I have here, but something like this with two fans, maybe even three fans. This reference design is not the best, it might be a bit too loud and the hotspot temperature may go up to 100 degrees Celsius, but even though the reference design is still perfectly fine and if you find a good deal for a reference design 5700 XT and you need a GPU, go for it. I have not yet decided what I'm going to do with my 5700 XT. I personally really like how it looks and I'm really tempted to keep it for myself just like a collector's piece, but it's uh, also some money and I might need to sell it to be able to afford other things. The next one is NVIDIA RTX 3060, and I'm talking about 3060 12GB, not the 8GB disgusting model. So this one in particular is from Zotac. 
In general, RTX 3060 does not have any flaws or any issues. It works perfectly fine with X99 and Core i7 CPUs. So if you find one for a reasonable price, sure, go for it. It's not a bad GPU. Overall, I was a bit disappointed that the performance of 3060 is even lower than from RX 5700 XT. And the price for 3060s right now is about 300 to 400 euros. I believe it's totally pointless to buy 3060 instead of 5700 XT, unless you believe that you definitely need to have DLSS and RTX support. About this Zotac RTX 3060, I can say that I don't like it in particular. The graphics card has stop fan technology, which means that the fans are not spinning if the graphics card is not warm enough. The problem is that the fans are kicking in when the graphics card is already too hot. And when it's getting too hot, the fans are suddenly from zero jumping to 100, and it's pretty noisy and pretty annoying. Sure, in about 20-30 seconds, the GPU temperature stabilizes and the fans are going down to normal ranges, then the graphics card is um, almost silent even though the fans are spinning and it is not overheating, but still. This moment when it spins from 0 to 100 is pretty loud and pretty annoying, thus I'm not impressed with this Zotac design. Now it's time to talk about this Intel Arc A750 graphics card from ASRock. ASRock did a good job here with the cooler and with the design of the graphics card. This cooler keeps the graphics card cold and quiet, so I have no complaints, and personally I also like how it looks, just simple squares, it also fits in most of the chassis, so no complaints. Unfortunately, we can't say the same about the Intel Arc GPU itself. During the test process I have got several black screen bugs when the computer works, a keyboard works, but on the screen I just see black screen and nothing. The only way to fix it is to make a hard reset, power off your computer and power it on. It's very annoying, but it is what it is. Furthermore, Intel Arc GPU failed in several games. For example, in Shadow of the Tomb Raider the game would just crash in DirectX 12 mode. And performance in Horizon Zero Dawn is totally broken when using Xeon E5 CPU. Additionally to these issues, Intel Arc GPUs are also overpriced. For example, for this A3 I paid 350 euros on a sale. The next day after I bought uh, this one, this GPU jumped up to 450 euros. 450 euros is total bullshit for this A750. For 450 euros you better buy RTX 3060 Ti and enjoy flawless experience with much better performance. All in all, if you can find a decent deal for A750 or A770, then you can still use this GPU, but I would recommend to use it with something like Core i3-12100, Core i5-12400 or Core i5-13400. This GPU is not well suited for the old platforms such as Xeon E5 2696 V3 on LJ2011 version 3. With this I have to finish my video. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting and bye bye.